Pittsburgh Steeler fans, welcome back to another episode of Steeler Stat Geek. This is Behind the Steel Curtains Deputy Editor Dave Schofield coming at you once again with his big brother, Rich. Rich, how's it going this Tuesday? Uh, glorious. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that could beat the Steelers being in the playoffs is now both the Patriots and Ratbirds being knocked away. I know exactly so, what you mean. Exactly. I'd much rather the Steelers still be playing, but if they're not into playoffs, at least now, at least now I have a chance to watch the Super Bowl. Yes, absolutely. And see, and that's that's kind of what what I'm what I was kind of alluding to with some other things is the Steelers weren't in it. There's only so much you can do. I'm so tired of the teams in the playoffs that I want to win constantly losing. And the teams that I really want to lose, constantly winning. Mm -hmm. It just feels like that's how it always is. And it's very frustrating. But you know what? I don't have to worry about that this year. Like I said to to Jeff on Sunday night's uh, Q&A that uh, Brian Anthony Davis and I um, sat in with him, is I finally feel like I can root for the AFC in the Super Bowl again. I mean, I already know. It doesn't matter how things happen this weekend. I know I'm pulling for the AFC in the Super Bowl right now. I would rather see either the Chiefs or the Titans. I mean, I'm not going to be torn up. I know a lot of people really want to then see the 49ers go down because of the whole how many, you know, six Super Bowls thing. But that's – the Steelers aren't alone at six Super Bowls. I'm not that torn up about it. Uh, some yeah. people would take delight in that. Uh, some people brought it up in the live chat Sunday night that, hey, wouldn't it be great to know that Belichick's choice to be the uh, – the the uh, the replacement for Brady ends up having ends up getting to, to hoist the Lombardi somewhere else. That would be kind of nice. So I don't know if, if I'm looking for that of different much. Storylines you yeah. can go here, but um, I don't have to listen to my to my purple clad friends uh, anymore <laughs> now this season. And um, yeah, and yeah. don't have to listen to any more press conferences from the pile of laundry over in the corner. So <laughs> hey. Honestly, I, I put it out there in social media. We talked about it Sunday night that I said, you know, I am not going to go up to those fans that are fans of that purple team downstate and gloat over no. over their loss. I'm not doing it this time. They I've I've dealt too many times with fans of other teams gloating over losses to me. It frustrates me. I'm tired of it. I'm not going to gloat over the loss to them. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enjoy it myself. It's and right. I'm going to I'm going to enjoy it with other Steeler fans. I'm not going out of my way to make them feel miserable because and guess what? You wouldn't know why? It's very simple. Because when they go out of their way to try to make me feel miserable with something like that, I can turn around and say, Hey, I didn't do that to you. And you know what that makes me? What all Steeler fans are compared to Ravens fans, better people. <laughs> hey, it, you know, it was so the guy that was instrumental in, in helping us get our house when we moved back out here um is a Ravens fan. And he oh. was at the game. And I felt for him actually being at the game. Why? Because it came up on my Facebook today. Where were we two years ago? We were at Heinz Field for that 45 to 42 defeat the last time the Steelers were in the postseason. And I know how I know how awful that was to be there and have to go through that. So somebody that I know that I know went to that game, I get it. I know what he was feeling sitting there. Yeah. And I'm not telling anyone else that you that to not be that way because each person no. has to do it themselves. My whole thing is I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to just let it go and enjoy it. Enjoy it with the other Steeler fans, how much we enjoy it. Enjoy it with my with my BTSC family. That's who I would rather enjoy it with rather than going out of my way to make them feel feel miserable because all I have to do is not say a word and they and because because they know. Um well you know, I, I want to use it to segue right into what we were thinking about. We were talking about that because we're talking about, you know, that, that Baltimore game and interesting to see them lose. And it was actually because of that game that you and I talked and thought about what we should talk about with the Steelers tonight. And that was that was the Steelers running game Oh, absolutely. because of how important Derrick Henry has been to the Titans in the wins over Baltimore and New England. 
Yes, absolutely. I have some comparison notes here. I have probably more notes than we're getting anywhere close to talk about. So let's let's dive in. We're five minutes into the show. Let's dive in to to these rushing numbers. We're going to look at we're going to look at the Steelers' rushing numbers, and we're going to kind of compare. I threw this out there as a trivia question on the Steelers preview. So for those of you that heard that already, I'm just going to I'm not going to throw it as a question. I'm just going to say it that. The, see, because the Steelers did not have a 500-yard rusher this year. They did not have one running back that rushed for 500 yards. And the last time that happened was – now, this I didn't put out there with, with the trivia. The last time that happened was 1967. Wow. 1967, when Don Sly was the leading rusher <laughs> with 341 yards. But the other thing is, is, is the Steelers have never had a 16-game season where there was a Russia that was less than, than 500 yards. The next lowest until this past year, the next lowest was in now, now I got to remember where I wrote that down was in 1991 when the leading rusher had 610 yards because Barry Foster only had 488 and Tim Worley only had 117 because he only played two games and Warren Williams had 262 and the leading rusher was Merrill Hodge with 610 yards. Hodge. And that because but that was dealing with injuries and other things in that right. season. And honestly, that was part of it with this that year. That was well. part of it this year as well. Is that there was injury. So but the problem we did it was we never were, were able to get anybody up. Yeah, you know, like you know, it wasn't like we got Connor up there a ways and then he was out and somebody else. I mean, we were constantly just rotating guys through. We couldn't keep anybody healthy. Holy cow, someone put it in the live chat. And I'm like, I just checked before we went live and the Pens were winning four to two. Yeah, now they're up six to two. Oh, and, you meant earlier they said five two and then a minute later six two. But what was nice is tonight was uh, we got to mention this because it's a Pittsburgh thing. It was the return of Sidney Crosby coming back from injury and he got the fifth goal. He got the fifth goal. So we'll, we'll okay, we'll get back to the Steelers now. But go Pens. Uh, they're currently up six two. They're on a very good hot streak. And that's that's the, another good thing that helps us through this offseason. But real quick, let's look at some of the key stats from, from 2019 and see where the Steelers ranked in the NFL. Uh, I looked at, at rushing yards, rushing attempts, average, and the number of touchdowns. Okay. And out of those four things, what do you think the Steelers finished the highest ranked in the NFL between yards, attempts, average, or touchdowns? Touchdowns. Touchdowns, no, they only had seven. They were 29th, tied for 29th in the league. Okay. With only seven. And and I'll and here's the other thing about those seven. Okay, seven touchdowns. It's the lowest in franchise history in a 16-game season. Another one of those things. Lowest in franchise history. All right. Well, if history. it wasn't, if it wasn't they, that they only, well, hold on. Let, let me let me finish it up. Okay. The Steelers did have seven in 1982, but that was the, the that year was of the, the strike. strike season. Yeah. And they, they had six in 1957 when they only played 12 games. So, yeah. So, believe it or not, it wasn't that. Wes is saying attempts. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think we attempted to run the ball enough. No, Wes is right. Oh, Wes I, is on it. Why not, Wes? <laughs> why did why you did, question oh, Wes? I'm uh, awful. Wes oh. is on it. Don't, Sorry, Wes. Don't, don't sorry, question Wes. Wes and his. I stats. will never question you again. Mm-hmm. So sorry. Three hundred and ninety-five attempts, tied for twentieth in the NFL. That was the highest ranking they were of anything with rushing in the NFL. And, and when we don't end up in the top half in anything rushing, that's just that's tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, twenty ninth in yards with with one thousand four hundred and forty seven. 30th in average of 3.7, which is really, I think, 3.66 um, yards per carry. So, yeah, believe it or not, none of it was good. None of it was good, but believe it or not, attempts was what was the highest. And that's and that's not impressive. And it, and it was still not yeah. when we were ranked 20th. Yeah. So sometimes you put a lot in rushing attempts, and sometimes you don't put a lot in rushing attempts. Like, for example, we, we talked about it before that when the Steelers reach 25 attempts and their record. Well, the question is, do, are they so good? Do they have such a good record because they reach 25 attempts or do they reach 25 attempts because those are games that they're winning? It's always right. a cause and effect thing, but like sure. the Steelers, the Steelers were seven and one when they rushed the ball 25 times or more. The only loss on the season 
was to the Jets when they hit exactly 25 attempts, but they only had on the 25 attempts, I think they only had like 70 some yards. It was something crazy. And of course they were 0 and 7 when they were less than 25. So like I say, I don't know that that's necessarily a predictor because if not, you just run a run play the first 25 plays of the game and say, Hey, we're good to go. No, it doesn't work that way. We yeah, no. trust me. We know. We know it's not, that's not how it is. You could try to but, play those numbers, but those numbers aren't going to, yeah, you can't but, force the numbers. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I always go back to that Buffalo game when the Steelers weren't losing until late in that game. And they still only had 14 attempts in that game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they were down in the first half, but they came back and took the lead. But I mean, that's the first half. You, you never abandon your run game in the first half. That That's the game. To me, that's the game that lost the Steelers the playoffs. That's the one that put them on the downward spiral. And that was the game that didn't make sense to me because you kept talking about the Steelers had been, they were winning because they were running the ball a lot. They did r- run the ball a lot in a nice stretch there where they had a, they had a really good run when they were, it was those games leading up to the Bills games. They were running the ball a ton. And that's when James Conner was injured. James Conner comes back and they rush it 14 times. I mean, you rushed it, you rushed it over like 28 to 30 times or more when it wasn't James Conner. So he comes back. If you didn't want to run him too much, run somebody else. You know? Yeah, it wasn't like we didn't keep guys active on the roster. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so let's just say James Conner did lead the team in rushing. It was four hundred and sixty-four yards. Second, would, and how many? How many games did he miss? He uh, he he only played in ten games. He missed six games. Missed six games. Ten games. He rushed for four hundred sixty-four yards. That would you know that's but that's forty-six point four yards a game. And actually, you give him that ten game, but the which um, the one game when he came back a little early, he only played not even a quarter. Yeah, and was out. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he, the the ten games is even kind of generous. So, and the second leading rusher for the season was. Do you have, do you, do you have a guess who, which who was next? Uh, Benny Snell. It was Benny Snell who also missed time because he had his knee scoped early in the season right? and missed games. He was just behind with 426 yards rushing. Um, Connor had 116 attempts. Snell had 108 attempts. Connor was the only player on the team that averaged double digit attempts per game. He had 11.6 attempts per game when Snell was 8.3 attempts per game, but there was only one player, not one player. I'm, the, the the top five numbers were all running backs, and then it got into the quarterbacks. So don't even think that it's something crazy like one of the quarterbacks coming in. I'm just telling you, telling you now it's not. Who do you think had the best average for the season for the Steelers? Um, White. That's yeah, that was easy. White he averaged five point one yards a carry. Yeah. So he had the best average. Um, which yeah, which was which was pretty solid. Now now here's a good question. I, I, I should have saved this for Thursday, but now we're talking about running here. Here, here's the what was the longest rush of the season for the Steelers? Do you have any idea either about how long it was uh, or 40, who it was? Forty-two yards. Oh, you're really close. Yeah, it was. It was just over forty yards, if I remember. It right. was forty-five yards. And, yeah, and it was. And was it what? It was white, wasn't it? Was it him yeah. or Benny Snell? I remember no. the play. It was a run to the okay. right. And it went down Mm -hmm. the right sideline. Yes, you are correct. Um, It was a play that I loved because it was a play where Roosevelt Knicks came back. They came in, did the jumbo package, sent Knicks one way. That's right. And ran Uh the running back. And and all the the linebackers stepped one way for just a second. I got to go with Wes. Wes said it was Trey Edmonds. That was was correct. It was Trey Edmonds. I I can't dare go off of Wes again since (laughs) I got beat down by that earlier. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was that was forty five of his ninety two yards was right there, so almost he was one yard shy of half of his yards for the season on that one run, and and it's funny because I thought that was a really good play design. Um, it, I mean, it, it got him. They they it showed, everyone was flowing to Knicks, and that that yeah. was that we talked about. You know, creativity in the offense. That play was probably about the most creativity I saw. 
Well, especially in the run game. Yes. Yeah, because so many times the Steelers were like, in order to block everyone, we bring in the extra blocker. And why are they having to block everyone? See, the run stats are just so so weird this year because you were dealing with injury when it came to individuals. You were dealing with extra defenders in the box because they didn't respect the Steelers quarterbacks to make them pay otherwise. And we were always going jumbo to run it. And that was the thing. They were bringing in def- extra defenders, so we bring in jumbo to try to block those defenders. And what do they do? They bring in more defenders. I mean, how many times was it either nine or ten in the box when you and I were watching? We were there right. talking about it. Yep. So, and that's that's just what they did. So, and I'm like, I would have liked for them to run otherwise, but there was just so many. Just defenses just stacked up on them against the run because they really did not respect the the passing. And that's why um, the, the Steelers did all, I mean, think about it. Here's one that's interesting. Do you know how many games the Steelers rushed for over a hundred yards? It was not many. Was it three? It was five. five. Oh, okay. It wasn't many, which still wasn't many. And that, wait, I had that written down there where that was in, in the, in the league. Um, that was tied for 28th in the NFL when they had five games of a hundred yards rushing, not, not a hundred yard rusher. They only had one of them all season. Right. Yeah. Um, and that was Connor against Miami, but they were tied for 28th with those five. The bears also had five, the Falcons had four and the dolphins and jets each had three. So I guess Mr. But naked get robbed. Didn't make that big of a difference. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw it out there. But here's what's interesting about the Steelers. Um, Wes, oh, real quick, Wes wanted to know how many um, um, how many games Snell played. I think he played 13, if I'm mistaken. I'm, that's off the top of my head. I'm, I was thinking he missed three, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that, if, if, anyone, if anyone in the live chat can help out with that. But the Steelers were, were one of two teams in the NFL this year that were undefeated when they went over 100 yards rushing. Interesting. They were undefeated. They were they went 5 and 0 in those games when they were over 100 yards. All right, so maybe we shouldn't have been pounding it to try to get to 25 carries. Maybe we should have pounded it to get to 100, <laughs> get 100 yards. yards. Now that is a much better stat to to show what what happened is when they went over 100 yards, they won the game. The only other team to win every game that went over 100 yards was the Kansas City Chiefs. They went 7 and 0. So that's one thing you, you got to realize is that when the Steelers did get the running game going, because like I said, they they committed themselves to running the ball. And I kind of liked their philosophy until it didn't work. And that was, we've you and I have said it before, Benny Snell needs, the carry, needs carries to get on a roll. Yeah. He does. But they like to use Benny Snell in the end game situation when they want to, when they want to pound the ball, wind the clock, hold on to a lead. The problem is if they don't get in that situation, what game was that where they never led that? uh, I think Snell had two carries in the whole game. Was that, I think that might've been the Cleveland game or something like that. No, that was too early on. I can't remember. Someone else might help me with that, but they couldn't do that. Yeah. Where's West when we need him. (laughs) Um, But that, that's just how it was is that, is that they, they were trying to save him for the end of game situation, which I think kind of made sense. Um, Jalen Samuels kind of fell off the face of the earth towards the end of the season. I, I towards the end of the season, he did well, like I thought this well, was going to be his opportunity season. to have a little better of a breakout year, and he really didn't do a whole lot. Well, like I said, he had that great game against the Patriots at the end of last year, right? I'm wondering with him being more of a receiver than even a rusher if he's better suited for a Ben Roethlisberger, someone who's going to be that passing threat and you have him in there as a passing threat, and then you can sneak the runs with him. Honestly, the Steelers didn't seem to have that this year, but I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. Um, Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to see here because Wes just put something in here. He said, he said um, um, and Bears had uh, five games with 100 yards or more. Um, 
David David Montgomery was one of um, two top rookie running backs this season. He had six, only behind Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs was just named the Pro Football Writers of America Offensive Rookie of the Year this year too. I think um, I think I think the question there is, you know, Montgomery plays for the Bears. How could he have six hundred yard games if the Bears only have five games with a hundred yards or more? I'm just going by Pro Football Reference. And, and, and I, will say, because, I will say that it is possible because he could rush for 100, 101 and they have some other guys rush yeah. for negative yards and well, actually is a team be below 100. Or for example, sometimes, you know, it's not a sack if Trubisky never appears to throw the ball and he's just back and trying to run it and loses six yards. Right. So, you know, that goes against the rushing stats. So that's an interesting question. That might be half to one. I'll have to just look up later just for the sake of trying to know what it was. But according to Pro Football Reference, the Bears only had five 100-yard rushing oh, games. Oh, I was saying, no, no, sorry, six touchdowns. Sorry. Oh, okay. six touchdowns. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. okay. I thought you meant he had 600-yard games. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure where he was going. He was. We were yeah. on touchdowns there. Uh, yeah. Years, so yeah. so it, okay. it, it, it's, it was an interesting season when it came to rushing. But he, here's what's crazy. Rushing the ball was one of those things you have to commit to, and you've got to stay with it. I still use that game against the Buffalo Bills as a prime example because do you know who did not give give up on rushing the ball when they were losing the game? was, was the, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills, Bills against the Steelers. They continued to run the ball. I mean, granted, they, they, they did hit a big, long pass play right after Renegade, but anyway. Um, but to even get back and tie the game, they were trailing. They ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. So you sometimes you just have to commit to it. And you know what? Committing to that run game kind of is what has us really happy in these playoffs right now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because we just saw who were, I mean, we all know who who's the two arch nemeses of the Pittsburgh Steelers. What's that? The two arch enemies of the Pittsburgh? Yeah. You mean teams or yeah, you know, teams? Oh, well, the Patriots and the Ravens. The Patriots and the Ravens, and they just got bounced in back-to-back weeks from the playoffs from the same team. From the because... same team, and the and a team that actually, when I watched those two games, I sat there and said, "Oh man, that's Steeler football." Yeah, I mean, you know, that might have been might as well have been Ben turning around, handing it off to the bus. Yeah, you know. Uh, that, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, completely. That it was just, and it, but see, here was the key. Well, if you really watch those games, he was running hard, but the offensive line was driving off the ball and controlling the line of scrimmage. They weren't playing finesse athleticism. And that offensive line has been looking like they're just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. When you just get out there, I mean, from, from a guy that played offensive line, the, the the part of the reason I liked it so much was because I knew what I was doing. I knew when the snap count was, I got to just fire off the ball and move somebody. And that's the whole thing. I'm just firing off and moving somebody. That's the way to do it. So when you're getting push and then he's busting through, here's the thing in the playoffs alone, Derrick Henry has 377 yards rushing in two games. Uh, almost, uh, almost would lead the Steelers for the season. <laughs> almost would lead the Steelers for the season. If you go back and include week 17 and say just over the last three games, 588 yards. Oh, my gosh. On 96 attempts. So that's the other thing. He's got He got almost as many attempts the last three games as what Benny Snell – and James Conner each got for this season. You know, he, he was within 12 of Benny Snell and within, what's that, another eight? So done, within 20 of Conner. So unless everything falls apart and they completely abandon their philosophy and don't hand him the ball or he gets injured, oh, don't want to say that, got a knock here. Um, he's going to have more rushing attempts in, 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 four, in, four, in four, four games. games than what any of the Steelers had on the season. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that, I mean, you can take what you want from it. I'll let you all draw your own conclusions. But, but to me, I mean, I, I have people telling me, oh, we've got to draft a running back in the second round. We've got to draft a running back in the second round. I'm still adamant saying we've got to see what happens in free agency. And I'm not sure 
if you want, if you want a Derrick Henry running back, then, then, then you're going to have to spend a very high draft pick on it. And that's a guy that's out there and is going to take 90 plus percent of your carries. I'm, I don't. And if the Steelers want that from somebody, they do not have that player on the roster. You don't have that player on the roster. Um, I love James Conner, but he's he's not he durable to take that many. There. Yeah, he, he to take that many carries. Um, Benny Snell's only a rookie. Is that could he develop into that? Absolutely, but that but we don't know. But if you draft somebody else, it might take them some time to get there. I mean, it that's just kind of how it is. So I'm not. I I don't feel like running back. Because so many people see this, see this trend of what's taken down these two teams the last two weeks, and they're like, Steelers need that big running. They need that power running back. They need a really good, solid running back. Okay, or do they just need to upgrade some off some stuff with the offensive line? Uh, do they do they need to have a more balanced attack otherwise on offense? I mean, I think they're bigger holes than running back personally, but there's might be other holes. Like I say, the biggest hole on this defense all comes down to one Alvin Bud Dupree. Because if he if he's not back, that is by far the greatest need that the Steelers have in the offseason is outside linebacker. But if he is back, everything else is you're talking about reserve player. So I I would I don't mind the Steelers taking the approach they did with running back. The Steelers rushed the ball better when it wasn't James Conner this past year. Honestly, as a team, when, when you look at some of those games when he missed and they and they spread the ball around and Benny Snell powered it at the end and all kinds of things like that. Um, and Wes actually brought up a point. I'm not really looking at the live chat, but I just saw Benny Snell's name in there. Give him an off season. Give him an offseason of NFL training and getting his body in better shape for the NFL. Because remember, these rookies, they go straight from their from their college games and their bowl games if they make them or if they choose to play in them, right into getting ready for the combine. And well, right from the combine to the draft and right from the draft to minicamp and then OTAs. And they don't – Well, remember the difference in Mr. You know, Butt Naked Rob between year one and two. Absolutely. That, 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 I mean, that was huge for him. That was – you know, Which like there were, we, there were fans point. that I know were thinking he was a bust after yes. year one. Thinking like, wow, he could have been so much more. Could have been so yeah. much more. Well, he missed um, the first three games, right? Rookie year. But that yeah. But there were people that were disappointed. There were people that were questioning. Well, next thing you know, he gets that off season program, gets in a little better shape, comes in and turns into you know, yes, the kind of guy we were looking for at running back. Exactly. That that is also the dual threat passing the ball. You don't know if you're running or passing based on him being on the field. I think that's what kind of happened with Jalen Samuels a lot this year. They didn't run him enough. And when he came out, the defense realized that it was, I mean, and it was also the personnel packages they were using him with. It was kind of an obvious run or obvious pass personnel package. But let's look at some of these real quick before we go on. Just to just to sum up, let's look at some of these rushing totals for the Steelers. Let's go back to 2013 when Mr. Buttnake could get robbed. For those of you that don't realize who we're talking about, that's Mr. Le'Veon Bell. I hate to say his name, but there, we said it once. The code has been broken. You can now insert that name into the code from this point on. His rookie year was the was, in 2013 was the lowest Steelers rushing total over the since between now and then. So it was worse than, than this past year. Um they, the Steelers only had um, uh, 1,383 yards that year. Okay. Now, the Steelers, what's crazy is they were 1,447 this year. They actually ran the ran for two more yards than they did last year. <laughs> last year, they were 1,445. Now, it, okay. took, it took 50 more attempts to get those two yards because they had 50 more attempts this year. But um, – the, the other rush totals for the Steelers are 2017, they were 1667, 2016, 1760, 2015, 1724, 2014, 1752. So notice, you know, take away that, that rookie year in 2013. And also there was something else I, I'm thinking about that I can't remember exactly what year that was. What changed from 2017 to 2018? I can think of two, ma- two major changes. From... 17 to 18? Yeah, so not from... Offensive coordinator? Offensive coordinator and 
your feature running back because yeah. he held out that year. Yep. So notice there was a drop and then that drop was, and then it stayed about the same. So I don't know. I don't want to blame it all on the, on the offensive scheme of the new coordinator. I don't want to blame it on the personnel. I'm not sure because it's kind of one of those things. It, it could easily be a combination of the two. Exactly. So. Does anybody remember what year Todd Haley started as the offensive coordinator with the Steelers? Anyone in the live chat, maybe throw that out there because it seems like it was during the Haley years. I can't remember. Was he there four years or five years is what I can't remember. Yeah, I can't either. So, but if you look at it over those last several, uh, over those years of, of having Todd Haley's offensive coordinator, that was a lot of rushing yards. Yeah. So was it, uh, the, um, someone said 12 or 12 or 13. So he might've been there before. So he was there before they drafted Le'Veon Bell. So it could be that, or just with his comfort of it, maybe it took him a few years to get going before they picked up the rushing game. Okay. Um, but I mean, cause if he was only, if he was only there five years, that would have been um, 14, 14, 15, or that would have been two, the same year as bell. So um, Wes says 2012. So I don't have, I didn't put down the 2012 stats, but that's just another interesting thing to think about. So, um, and someone said there, Mark said, Haley saved Ben's career. Absolutely. Because he kept him from getting killed all the time by, by making him stand in the pocket forever to throw, to throw nothing but deep passes. But the big, it's funny. I've always said the biggest knock on Todd Haley wasn't his ability to run the offense. Um, it was, it was his ability to get along with people. Exactly. That's what, that's why he did. Wasn't brought That's back. been his problem everywhere wherever he's been. Guy's kind of a jerk, <laughs> you know, from everything that you hear. And he doesn't no, like on, dealing with other jerks. No, come on. If you're going to do a Pittsburgh Steelers show, the guy's yeah. kind of a jag. He's a jag. I mean, that's what, yeah. So that was the biggest problem. Um, now, granted, no coach is perfect. Was no. were, were we tired of bubble screens with Todd Haley? Absolutely. Were we tired of, of a, a toss sweep on fourth and one instead of a quarterback sneak? A sneak? Absolutely. But Y'all, they also had some good stuff there, there too. So, I, like I say, some people say because I'm critical of Randy Feekner, I also want I want people to understand things. Okay, this might have to be an article that I that I come up with sometime. Is just because you feel one way doesn't mean you feel another. Meaning, just because I was a fan of Mason Rudolph didn't mean I was a duck hater. I did that article. Just because I'm critical of Randy Feekner doesn't mean that I believe he should be fired. I don't. I think it would. I think it would be silly. I think Ben wouldn't want to come back and play for a new offensive coordinator at this point in his career. You know, I'm kind of the same way. You know, people. I wrote an article last off season. I'm like, uh, if you want Mike Tomlin fired, but you want Ben Roethlisberger to come back, think that through. You have you, you're not going to have both. You have it both ways. You know, why would Ben want to play this late in his his career for a new head coach? He probably wouldn't. So, I mean, nothing's definite, but I'm just going with. Hey, we're about probability, aren't we? Sure. So. That's just what it is. Um, so, just because I just want Coach Feetner to do better, I just want him. I just want him to diversify more. He he's the he's the blockbuster video. <laughs> if you remember last week, I, I ran a. I, I've been doing the the throwback Tomlin Tuesday quotes since there's no press conference. And last week I talked about where he called Javon Hargrave. He said nose tackle was like a blockbuster video. You got to diversify or you're going out of business. Right. So same, same kind of thing with, I, I'd like to see coach Feetner do that. So just, when I say things about Feetner, like, Oh, Dave hates Feetner. It's not that I just want him to do better. So yeah. <laughs> hey, I like someone said that there. Zachariah says Feetner needs a coach to coach him. Well, so, see, see, see if we'd have been, if people would have listened, you know, before this past year, people think, you know, we hate, hate Keith Butler because, yeah. you know, the defense had been, you know, the offense was curious and the defense wasn't living up to it. No, we just wanted Keith Butler to do together, do better. Yeah. Guess what? He got some talent in there that, you know, got the right kind of talent there. And this year, guess what? They did better. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah. hey, you know. Yes. So I think that Coach Feetner with Ben Roethlisberger, it's that the it's it's a it's a great combo and coach Feetner was hired not because he's a great diversified offensive mind he was the right person to do what was best with Ben Roethlisberger and without Ben Roethlisberger this year 
it kind of it, it really showed his shortcomings, right. in my opinion. But I still think that's the best thing if it's going to be Ben. But if Ben, whenever Ben is done playing, then we can. Then I we can. don't. I don't know that Randy Land is where we want to be. So um, I am going to bring up one comment here. Um, this was from from Ezra Me- Nehemiah. He said Munchak left, O line suffered, Ben went down, backups all year, no tight end threats in the middle. I don't know if there was no tight end threats, or they just didn't use tight ends at all. Okay, it's easy to stop our run with those factors. Our running game will be fine. We just got to run it. You know what? I completely agree with that statement. I do. I do. And I, I, I think also it'll think, be fine. But and we've got to we've got to do it. Also think that if you've got a quarterback, you know, for if Ben is back and Ben is Ben, that's my biggest worry. Is Ben comes yeah. back and he's not Ben? Yes. Um, if Ben comes back and is Ben and returns somewhat more of a threat to the passing game, that also opens things up for the running game. Yes. And, and again, then some some of these, I think, without having Ben in there, some of the flaws in our running game became magnified. Yes. Because we didn't have Ben as a quarterback to help cover up some of those blemishes. That is a fantastic point. Is that you didn't, you know, Ben Roethlisberger covered a lot of other weaknesses, you know, that you didn't have to worry about him being his weaknesses because Ben Ben took care of it. Right. But that's why I went ahead and opened it up. We've got about five to seven minutes left here. Um we're thinking about changing up the show if some people might like it. I'm going to throw it out there to the live chat people that we we are thinking about maybe splitting the show. Yep. You know, you know, splitting the show in half, doing the numbers, kind of like we do on Thursday nights where we do the after party, but like doing the show with the numbers, coming back a few minutes later and doing a new show that's just a Q and A show. Um, we're 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 thinking of that idea. We thought of it earlier today, so we didn't want to just throw it out here at the last minute. Um, but that's something that's thinking. So if you all want to chime in if you think that that's something good that might be fun to do um in the future let me know but we already once again we've already got the uh a super chat question yep. um from snowman from the Boyle, snowman. right there with the super chat five dollars into the chip tip jar for those of you that don't know super chat function write your comment hit the dollar sign i always say write your comment first so that way it doesn't just come up with nothing there um write your comment hit the dollar sign donate any amount of money you want to the show and we'll make sure we, we bring it up. Are you going to bring but, it up? And you know, bring yeah, it up. I'm, I'm, Oh, I thought I had, no, um, there you go. There it is. But also the most important thing you all can do more than even give us your money is just to make sure you go in, um, like, and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed and definitely like, so five dollars from snowman. How about for next year? Benny Snell was the starter and James Connor is the short yardage man. I could see it. Honestly, I, you if could. Snell comes on, I'm like split. I have no problem splitting up carries for my team. I hate it from a guy as a guy that does fantasy football and that I want guys on my fantasy team. It stinks because you never know which one to play. But for my team, I don't care if it's one guy rushing for 180 yards on 20 carries or if it's two guys each rushing for 90 yards on 10 carries. Right. doesn't matter. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's – that's good. Okay. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I don't know. That's what, that that's what they'll do, but I definitely wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. Michael Malley says, do you think we go heavy free agency? I don't think we can. I don't know. We can, we would have, we would have a lot of work to be able to do to free mm-hmm. up the cap space, be able to do it. Um, Ben's yeah. Ben's contract just is gobbling up too much cap space right now. Um, we would have to do a lot of work prior to free agency and we would then basically be telegraphing what we're up to. So, yes. Well, of course, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Actually, most people call mm-hmm. me a wise guy, but that's, <laughs> that's going. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I agree. If you do want some, some salary cap information, you've got to go to Behind the Steel Curtain. Flip's been filling us in on all the salary cap stuff. He had a great one before that said yes, about how did. the Steelers can't restructure stuff because of the way the CBA is is built when you're going into the last year of your collective bargaining agreement you're not allowed to do certain things so right. we it's not like we it's not like we could restructure Ben and push cap money forward you can only push so much of it forward, forward. Correct. right because of the not because of, of the CBA it would go so. into a new CBA okay uh Wes says biggest question I have right now is let's say and he said he hope it doesn't happen let's say Ben is healthy 
and then blows out his el elbow again at the very beginning. Okay, you know what? That's that. It, it would be two thousand over again. It, it mm -hmm. would be back to the. Oh, I'm not, no, I'm afraid it would be back to the eighties. Yeah. When when Bradshaw blew his elbow out and ended his career, and we were left then with several years of Mark Malone, yeah. Cliff Stout, and yes. mediocrity. This this is the rest of of Wes's comment that didn't come up. He said oh, okay. again in the season, "How much would you uh, would you question co coaching and the and the QB choices?" Um, bottom line is that's just so that. Did we ever think that was going to happen to Ben this year? No. First time ever he's been on the IR. It's just one of those things. And I would also like back, to think that if something happens with Ben, I would like to think that in this offseason, Randy Feekner is going to do a little more to prepare himself for what happens if I don't have Ben. Yes. I, yeah, I think he's going to do a better job as a coach to prepare himself and know how he's going to approach things if Ben comes back and God forbid something happens to him. I'm good. I hope so. That would that would be um I'd I'd really like that. Hey, Wes, Wes likes the QA show. We might have to make sure we bring that up for next time. Um where where was a question? Uh oh no, Michael said that um we've made more splashes as of late in free agency. Yes, we have. Like Steven Nelson was fantastic, but that was when we had some space yeah, and some I don't space. think we have the space. I know. Just imagine if, I mean, you thought we were getting all that money off the books with Mr. Third and fifth, but the way they did other things, it just did not work out that way. The way they keep pushing stuff back. So, um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm trying to find something. Um, someone, some people were asking it skipped ahead. So I'm just going to bring up what I happen to see. Okay. Um, Snowman see, wants to know why we. Snowman wants to know why we haven't had Flip on the show. <laughs> um, that's a good question. You know, maybe, maybe we, we, maybe we, if we do a salary cap show, trust me. Oh, I'll, that would be. I'd yeah, that would be fun. Get a special guest in there. So if you're listening to that, Flip. Well, you you'll you me me anyway. So we'll we'll see if that at some point that's a good stat thing to do. Um, I saw something that someone said, um, here, I'll bring up this one from Ezra Nehemiah. It says that the Bengals draft Burroughs will be facing three first round QBs all under 24, a little worried. Make sure we stay focused on the defense for years to come. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. We've got the young defense, but just because you have a, you know, first round Heisman winning trophy quarterback doesn't mean that they're always going to pan out. So, how many how many first round you know top three or four draft pick quarterbacks have we seen Cleveland trot out there? How, how many yeah. years did, how many years was Carson Palmer the quarterback for the Bengals? You know, um when I when I look at things like that, that doesn't worry me so much. Yeah, yes. So I, I know exactly exactly what you mean. Um um, I've got people telling me they're going to, uh, Ryan says he's going to email me about a topic to do research. All right. Um, here's a question that says, what if they, um, what if they get the CBA done by the Super Bowl? I don't know if it has to be by the Super Bowl or when it would be. I can't remember if, if Cliff addressed, if Cliff, sorry, if Flip addressed that in his article. Um, I'd have to go back and double check that. So uh, just a lot of, a lot of very, very different things there. What, <laughs> Like Lance Williams says, what ifs are for losers, but sometimes you've got to be ready for you prepare and you hope for the best prepare for the worst. So you're hoping that Ben Roethlisberger is back and healthy, but you still got to be able to, 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 to look at that a little bit better. Um, I know so I couldn't find the question uh, where someone asked about um, a 17 game season that I know that was, that was proposed. I proposed a 17 game season two years ago before I even started with Behind the Steel Curtain. And then they published that article. I, I've wrote it two different times since I've been with BTSC about it. Um, and what do you know? They kind of were, were, uh, were, were looking at my idea. I personally would just like to keep it at 16 games, but if they're going to change it, don't change it too much. So um, I was going to bring up this one. 
and this one and one more, and then we're going to call it a show. All Do right. you think they give Paxton any chance to possibly learn the system and possibly change his luck here? Um, he did have the pedigree was a first rounder, not replacing Ben, but maybe he's a backup. As far as I, I mean, I'd have to look and see if if Paxton Lynch is someone that they're is that someone they're going to bring into camp. That um, that I, I don't, I'm not opposed to it, but I still don't think he's the answer. And like yeah, I said, I the reason they didn't go to him is they didn't prepare him well enough. So. That was that question was from Dill Whitted, by the way. Yeah, that was you Dil mentioned Whitted. who it was. Folks yeah. on the podcast will want to know that. Oh yes, absolutely, because he he's the one who gave us a great stretch of predicting perfect scores this season. I got to yeah. give applause for that. This wasn't the final question I'm going to bring up, but I am going to just bring it up just to say is that Ryan said 17 season two bye weeks, right? That's what I said. Yeah, two bye weeks. One of your bye weeks is guaranteed to be before your Thursday night game. No more play on Sunday, play on Thursday was my proposal. You can do it even if your bye week is week is week one or two is one of them, just to make sure you don't have that. You're not playing on that short. I mean, the players would would have to get on board with that because they don't like those right. short weeks. But the last question I was going to bring up was from Frank P that says, Who do you guys like this weekend? Oh, in the in first? the football games or just yeah. who I like, you know. <laughs> I like um, uh, believe it or oh man, the NFC game is going to be a tough one. Um you, I, I think about the 49ers and how they kind of dominated Green Bay the last time they played. Um but Rodgers is the kind of quarterback that's gonna go back and tape and tape and tape and tape and tape and tape and, and, and try to figure out then and exploit things that he saw. Um, but I, I'm still probably going to go 49ers in the, in the NFC. And um, uh, just a- after, after that comeback, I just can't, I can't go against, you know, uh, the chiefs and Mahomes in the AFC. Um, as much as I'd like to see Tennessee continue to run the ball and have that kind of success. Um, just not sure that the firepower that the chiefs are able to put out there offensively is something they're going to be able to stop. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with the 49ers just because I think that they have their, they have a fantastic coach. I mean, even their, even their defensive coordinator is, was, was, his name was thrown out there with some other places as to being a head coach. Right. So, um, so I'm going with that aspect of that team. So I'm just going to pick them. Can't I'm, I can't really go with one over the other coaching wise because I think Mike Vrabel does a great job, and I yeah, think I know. Andy, Andy Reid, um, he that I think I think he's a, an underrated coach in my opinion that people don't give him the credit that that he deserves. Um, I've often said that Randy, it's hard for Andy Reid to win a Super Bowl because he doesn't always get the best players because he gets his players to overachieve at times. But for that, I'm going to say I'm going to go with Kansas City because I just don't, I. I'm, I'm going to root for Tennessee, but I'm going to think it's going to be Kansas City. But I'm going to be okay either way. Yeah. I don't know that Tennessee can 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 keep up with the scoring output. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I think it's. I mean, my goodness, they put up 51 points this past weekend. They they covered they covered the over under by themselves. So well, they didn't and, even and, need the Texans. And they did that in in, yeah. in less than three quarters. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean that's that's crazy. Real quick, people did want to know. Um, uh, you're okay with your hand, right? You just had you had. I had sh- carpal tunnel surgery this week. Snowman was asking what happened yeah. to my hand. So for those uh, of you that couldn't see on YouTube, that you've got the bandaged hand, but you're doing good and it's already doing, doing much great. better, right? Much much better. Yep. And this thing that just on for protection for a week, and then I'll be back so, to then I'll be back to abnormal. Back to abnormal. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. We're we are going to to, to be working a couple things to see. We're we're trying to keep our our for podcast reasons our 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 time down. So it might make sense for us to go to just two back to back shows for that reason. That uh, that that we'll do the stats and then we'll come in so we can spend more time doing your Q and A stuff because I know you all like that a lot as well. And we do too. So absolutely, that's like some of our favorite stuff. So. Thanks. Remember, make sure you're checking into BehindTheSteelCurtain.com, your one-stop shop for all things Pittsburgh Steelers. We've got tons of articles coming out. We have, oh my goodness, it's it's at least eight a day, most of the time more. 
Uh, I, I'm still doing breaking news stuff almost every day because there's still news coming out there. Uh, make sure you check it there. All the podcasts, everything as of right now, everything's staying the same. Um, don't know that we're even going to change which shows happen on which nights like we did in the off season last year. So, but most importantly, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you then know when the shows are coming out. So anything to say in parting, bro? No, just uh, everybody enjoy some playoff football this weekend. Wish we were watching the Steelers, but we'll have to enjoy it without them this year. But at least there's no Ravens or Patriots. Exactly. At least we can we can cheer hard for the AFC. So thank you all very much. And remember to tune in, tell a friend, and subscribe. We'll see you all next week.